have you. I just got back from seeing the number one thing that I was most looking forward to being entertained by in 2021, Denis Villeneuve's Dune. And as I predicted, I was completely taken aback by the experience. This is a masterpiece of a movie, and it's meticulously crafted with just a genius perspective on what Frank Herbert put in his original Dune novel. Arrakis comes alive in this movie, and it is something to behold from frame one to the conclusion. It's a long film. It's a good almost three hour experience when you go to sit down in the theater to watch this or on HBO Max. But honestly, this is, as everybody is saying, a movie to be seen on the largest screen possible with the sound cranked up. I saw it in 3D and at first it was like, wow, it's quite dim and stuff. But uh, some of the opening sequences take place as the sun is setting and then the, you know, obviously the, the bright skies of Arrakis come to life. I didn't really think about the 3D aspects. It, it, it still played quite well. I would prefer to have seen this on a 2D screen with the crispest resolution possible. But I was still breathless watching the film and completely blown away and impressed by the craftsmanship that I was watching. It stars an incredible roster of actors. Timothy Chalamet as Paul Atreides. His father, Duke Leto, is played by Oscar Isaac. Rebecca Ferguson is his mother, playing Lady Jessica. We've got Gurney, played by Josh Brolin, and Duncan Idaho, played by Jason Momoa. Everybody is perfectly cast in their roles. They are familiar personalities that we've seen these actors portray before, maybe a little less so with uh, Timothy Chalamet, who's still on the rise, but everybody it fits, you know, it all clicks into place. But one thing that I definitely noticed with this movie, there is a lot of attention to detail in all of the scene work and all of the interplay between these actors. They're all so professional and so calculated in their choices and believable in their choices, but the effects work and the visual kind of framing of every sequence in the film, whether you see giant ships come over the horizon or enter an orbit of a planet or uh, you know drop landing ships or see streams of fighters coming from the, sh the ships flying above and landing and getting into hand-to-hand -hand combat with all of the other fighters that are charging towards them every shot is a masterwork. It's all just beautiful. You never think about the effort it took to build the visual effects. You're just, you believe them. You know, you believe the ornithopters, the helicopter-like small ships that fly over the desert plains of Arrakis. And you believe that shielding technology that the House Atreides warriors all have at their disposal. All of it is just so tactile and so believable and so well presented. Even the effects of the giant sandworm, you're just along for it. I mean, it's so expertly composited and so refined. I mean, these are some of the most beautiful visual effects I've ever seen. And so, yes, I guess I was thinking about them, but what I was thinking most about them was how they disappear into the story and how you are just along for this mesmerizing ride. I was fortunate enough to see this movie with my wife and we both really enjoyed it, but it wasn't very long into the picture where I turned to her and I said, I think this is one of the most incredible movies I have ever seen. And then there's just escalation based on that, you know, more ships and more incredible visual effects. And you also get caught up in the intrigue of the story as well, this Imperium force that has its own structure and competent military is playing houses against each other. The houses are the ruling classes of these different planets. And House Atreides has been sent to Arrakis to mine the spice and to take control of the Fremen, the indigenous people that live there. And there's a lot of allegory there, a lot of commentary there uh, to mine, no pun intended. But the Harkonnens, the, this other group that had been on Arrakis, is incredibly pissed off. And it all is a big puppet game that the Imperium, the sort of overseers, have been playing. And so there is that sort of Game of Thrones-esque backstabbing and plot twists and things. And that's all wonderful to sink into as well. Etched against all of the sort of medieval sort of plot points that we see, like castles fighting against each other, is just this insane science fiction that feels palpable, you know? It feels very believable. It feels a little like we're dipping into mysticism when we think about what the spice can do, which is it, it, the spice that is mined on Arrakis is the most valuable substance in the universe because it allows these different planets to uh, have interstellar travel um, because it kind of folds space and time. And uh, it's a psychedelic as well, which is very trippy and very weird. And, you know, Paul Atreides 
This is a story of his ascension. But the thing that you have to know going into this, uh, especially if you're a Dune fan like I am, and honestly, I read Dune more than 20 years ago when my wife and I, she was my girlfriend at, at the time, went on a trip to Mexico, and I was completely uh, in rapture with the story. I was just like rifing through the pages and just blown away by the imagery in my mind. Denis Villeneuve, I know he went through something similar when he was younger as well, and he has made it his life's journey and his biggest star to wish on to be able to build this film for us, and it's evident. You really feel that this was built and, and made by a person that loves the source material and wanted to honor it in every way possible. And it was incredible for me to see these iconic elements from the story and the plot sort of come to life. Not just the actors, not just the characters. I love the still suits that everybody wears and the athleticism and the acrobatics of the Fremen warriors was incredible. And the elements with the Bene Gesserits forcing Paul Atreides to kind of prove his worth. It's such a massive, massive endeavor. It's a movie to be seen way more than once. Um, but, and there's a giant but here, it's not the whole story. It's only part one of the whole Dune book. There's a lot more that has to come after this. I don't know if Denis Villeneuve is going to be able to make this. I mean, this would be the biggest blunder on Warner Brothers' part if they don't give him the budget to make a sequel to this movie. It's called Dune Part One. It's not Dune, it's Dune Part One. That's the title card when the movie starts rolling. I don't know if that was Denis Villeneuve, you know, kind of sticking it to Warner Brothers to make them greenlight and commit to greenlighting a sequel. But yes, there's a lot more to be told. It would be a damn shame if that film doesn't come. But even as a standalone piece of entertainment and escapism, and even though there's a massive cliffhanger and you are left wanting a hell of a lot more, you can't discount the artistry and the beautiful craftsmanship by Villeneuve and his team of experts. He's just got a perfect eye for this stuff, and he is an amazing, clearly an amazing collaborator. He gets the best in the business to work with him and to help propel his vision forward. This is stunning stuff. You have to watch it. It would be a crying shame if you do end up watching it on your iPhone. Um, <laughs> but no matter what you do, you gotta see this movie. It's incredible and absolutely mesmerizing. I'm gonna give Dune part one a 10 out of 10.